Okay. I mean, what, one of the answers that I've been hearing asking this question of others of late is, you know, we've had this pig through the Python effect, right, where we just shoved an unprecedented amount of stimulus into the system, you know, in response to the pandemic. And, um, you know, eventually that that stimulus will make its way through the system, that pig will, will exit the other end of the Python. Um, but some of the explanations have been just been that pig was so damn big maybe we should even be calling it like a hippopotamus through the python where it's just still going through it like it's just it, it's it's delayed the reckoning because we we still have to get the remaining amount of stimulus out of the system before the system really can start rolling over due to the the impacts that you and I are talking about um i'm just curious do you do you think similarly or have a different opinion well yeah we increased the money supply by between 40 and 60% depending on which monetary measure you're using um in within 20, just two years right yeah in two years yeah so um that accounts for the uh the spike in home prices for instance and the fact that stocks went up so far during a, a recession and a pandemic you would think that uh, people would go risk averse um in a time like that but um money was just so cheap that they instead they just uh, you know they went risk on bought whatever they could buy because um, that's what people do when they have too much money on their hands. Um, uh, by the way, RV sales boomed during that time too. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, um, it, it could well be that all of that money is still working its way through the system. Uh, but that is coming to an end now too, if you look at interest rates. For instance, car loans now, especially for used cars, are up in double digits. 14% um, okay, record yeah. high. Yes, yes. So that's that's not easy money anymore. Mortgage rates just this week hit seven percent again, which um, which make the average more um, the average mortgage now um, accounts for forty one percent of the disposable income of the the family that has the mortgage, which is way too high. You know, that's way too higher. high. Yeah, um, and there are lots of other housing related stats pointing in that direction that that money is no longer easy. Um, and because of that, uh, what existing home sales are down by 23% year over year um, and home prices are starting to fall. They're down by 4% year over year and or I'm sorry, 4% sequentially now month over month. So we're seeing it start to happen and it just hasn't worked its way into the, the very top line numbers yet. Um, but housing is a big part of the economy. And if interest rates are too high for housing to really function, you know, you had a, a really good interview a few weeks ago where you, where you had one of your resident experts um, interview another resident real estate expert. And uh, they, they talked about housing as being frozen right now because, yeah, prices are really high, but there's very little inventory. People don't want to sell at these prices because they remember slightly higher prices in the recent past. And buyers can't buy here. You know, no, very few people can buy a half a million dollar house with a seven percent mortgage. That's just beyond the means of seventy or eighty percent of the country. Right. And with anybody uh, with a brain, you don't want to buy, uh, even if you could, because you're like, I'm still getting near record prices. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm having to pay a very high price, and I've got a mortgage rate that's double what it was two years ago. So I'm getting the worst of both worlds. I'm getting the high price and I'm getting the high mortgage. <laughs> Who yeah, would want to so, buy right so, now? Even if you can, it's a horrible deal compared to anything in your adult history, right? You, yeah. you you remember 20 or 30 years when it was a better deal than this. So it's just hard to do. And, uh, you know, that the way it works in the housing market is that sales tend to dry up at a peak because of the factors we just talked about. Um, but prices don't go down for a while. It's just fewer and fewer sales. And then people start to panic. People who have to sell. Um, put their house on the market for just whatever. And then there are all these empty houses out there. There's, some, there's something like 10 times as many empty houses in the U.S. as there are um, houses that are currently for sale. And a lot of those empty houses are their Airbnb or their um, things where people bought, a, bought them as an investment and whatever. But a lot of those people can be spooked by what's happening. They can have problems in their own lives and then have to sell the... Um, the optional stuff, you know, the, the house that they're not living in. And when that hits the market, that will push prices down dramatically. So along with all this other stuff, you know, a rollover in the economy and a recession, we should see a big drop in house prices.
in the coming okay. year. And I'm glad you said that because you, you've seen a lot of cycles um, and you've written books you know, about these cycles, one of your most recent ones being the money bubble. Um, and uh, I, 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 I like hearing your statements here because they're corroborating statements that I've made in the past, which is that um, you know, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of folks uh, more, I think, than previous generations who own second homes or and certainly the Airbnb, you know, boom encouraged people to buy many homes, right? To to rent them out an Airbnb. Um, and those are you're not living in them, right? So if you personally uh enter tighter financial times, well, it's pretty easy to sell one of those properties, right? Because it's not essential to you. Yeah. Especially if it's an Airbnb and it's starting to go negative, right? You're like, yeah, just get this thing. Let, let me stop the bleeding. Let me just sell this thing, right? So when when you have this this sort of freeze in the market right now, transaction wise, right? It's right now this, the sellers are, are just trying to see if they can hold on through this rough patch, right? And then hopefully the Fed's going to pivot and, and we'll get back to the point where interest rates go back down and I'll be okay housing wise, right? And prices will, will, will stabilize or come back to where they were. But the longer that that doesn't happen, right? Um, there are going to always be some organic transactions, right? The people die, they get divorced, they have to move, whatever, right? And so because housing is priced at the margin, it's it's that percentage of organic transactions that are going to start to reset prices in these markets. And yes, sellers can hang in there for a certain period of time. But once you've got somebody who gets either enters into a distressed state or is just looking and seeing that the prices are starting to come down because of the organic sales, there's a first mover advantage, right? To bolt from the herd if you're a seller and say, well, look, if I do a price reduction now and get out, I can still get out with about 95% of what I have right now, right? So I can still get most of my equity in the house. Uh, I don't want to be one of the bag holders who's waiting you know, later on once everybody else has started to sell. So people will start to bolt. And when that happens, I think it sort of becomes a scramble for the exit for anybody who was going to sell. Right, which is well, geez, I better put my market, my, my house in the market now because I'm going to get a better price this week than I will a month from now, and then you kind of get this cascade factor. Do you see it the same way? Oh yeah, that's how markets work at the peak, and because we we have to remember that prices are set at the margin. In other words, with a house, if um, you sell your house for ten percent less than the previous house in your neighborhood sold for. You've changed the comps in your I've neighborhood. I've repriced every house. Yeah, every house you you have with that, and see that that's um, especially in a fiat currency system. That's how fast wealth can evaporate because that that one house, like you said, it made the whole rest of the neighborhood less valuable. So just that relatively little amount of money that changed hands had this massive multiplier effect, negative multiplier effect on the neighborhood. That's going to happen in the stock market when somebody decides to bail on a big position in Amazon or something like that. And then all of a sudden, um, half a trillion dollars just evaporates. Um, and and when, when I short NVIDIA and it plunges, <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be, you know, another half a, half a trillion dollars just um, gone. It's not like it goes anywhere. It just ceases to exist.